Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we learned how to make a cardboard loom and dress it with warp. In this video, I will show you how to prep a loom for weaving and some basic weaving techniques. Before we start, let's review some weaving terminology. These yarns that run vertically on the loom are called the warp. The warp is secured at the top and bottom of the loom and it's important that these yarns remain taut. Normally this yarn is thin and sturdy because it must support the yarns that will be woven through it. The yarns woven through the warp to create a design are called the weft. The weft yarns vary in size, texture, and material. In order to weave the yarns, you can wrap them around a shuttle or a bobbin. There are various options, but I will show you how to make and use a paper shuttle. To make a paper shuttle, cut a thick piece of cardstock into a 10 inch by one and a half inch rectangle. On the shorter ends, cut out a triangle that is one and a half inches high. Then repeat this on the other end. Take an end of your desired weft yarn and tape it down to the center surface of the paper shuttle. Be sure to secure the tip well. This will keep the paper shuttle from being entangled in the warp as you weave. Once secured, wrap the yarn a few times around the paper shuttle. Next, we'll make a shed stick. The shed stick allows you to weave between the warp threads. When the shed stick is positioned vertically, it creates an opening which allows you to pass the weft through. The shed stick should be one to two inches longer than the warp width. The shed stick should be sturdy enough to stand the pressure of the yarns. You can use a thin piece of wood or a thin ruler. Here I'm using a thin piece of sturdy cardboard. This is not the best option for the long run because it can break, but it does work as an alternative when you don't have a ruler or a piece of wood around. The first thing we must weave is the shed stick. First, go under the first yarn, then over the next. Repeat this until you get to the end. Be sure not to miss a strand, and if you do miss one, go back and start over at that point. Now you can move the shed stick up and down through the warp yarns. Here you can see the over under method applied from the right to the left side of the loom. This next part is optional, however, I always use spacers before weaving my design. You can prepare the spacer for weaving by folding it once horizontally and then again. Move the shed sticks towards the top of the loom and now an opening has been created for the tissue to be pulled through. Once the spacer is secured between the warp yarns, use the shed stick to push it down and secure it towards the base of the loom. When finished, slide the shed stick toward the top of the loom. In order to add the next tissue, you're going to need one more piece of sturdy cardboard. This time you will start by weaving over the first yarn and under the second yarn. Continue this pattern until you get to the end of your warp. While weaving in the second shed stick, be sure to look for any mistakes. If you find any, go back and correct it so that your pattern is correct. Follow the same steps as you did for the first spacer. Lift the second shed stick vertically, insert the spacer, and close the shed by putting down the shed stick horizontally. 
If you're using a smaller loom, then you might find it a little bit difficult to move the second shed stick up and down. So try moving the first shed stick up higher or don't worry about lifting the second shed stick too high. Just lift the second shed stick high enough to get the tissue or spacer in. This process does take a little bit of time to do because you're not using a shuttle or a bobbin to help move the tissue or the spacer through. Um, so it's important to be a bit gentle in this part and don't rush too fast. This also shows the importance of having sturdy warp yarn. You can see here that you're tugging and pulling and moving the yarn around so you don't want to have a yarn that is too flimsy or too stretchy or something. You want something that's going to stay in place. As you push down the tissue with your spacer, you want to make sure that you are adjusting your yarns and making sure that they're straight. Straighten out the tissue, and when you're satisfied with the results, you can remove the second shed stick. Once the second shed stick has been removed, you can move down the first shed stick into position. Open the shed stick and insert your final spacer. When you're done, close it by moving the shed stick horizontally and move the final spacer down. Again, always check your pattern. Make sure that you are following the correct under over method so that your spacers will stay secured. For me, three spacers are enough for straightening out the warp. So I'm going to remove this shed stick and re-weave it into the warp. Remember to follow the weave pattern. If the previous row was under over, then this section you will use the over under method. If your previous method was with the over under method, then weave the shed stick with the under over method. The last tool and perhaps the most important tool that you'll need is the loom comb. There are many names for this, a comb, beater, fork, but they're all used for the same reason, to secure the placement of the weft and to adjust the density of the yarns. Here I'm using a wide tooth comb, but you can also use a fork from your kitchen that you will just use for weaving. You can begin weaving by placing the shed stick in a vertical position. With the other hand, pull the shuttle through the warp yarns. A few inches of yarn should remain on the other end. After weaving each row of weft yarn, be sure to secure the yarn with a loom comb. After you have sent a row of weft through the warp, before starting the next row, always catch the last warp yarn. Never leave a warp yarn on its own. It might make your project appear unfinished and it will make your warp fragile. Continuing with the over under method, you will now use your bobbin or shuttle to weave back. As you weave, gently move the shuttle or bobbin through the warp yarns. As you continue weaving, you will alternate between using the shed stick or your shuttle to help weave between the yarns. You find it easier to weave when using one hand to push the shuttle through and the other hand to guide. Once you've sent the yarn through, with your left hand, pinch the yarn on the corner and with your right hand, pull the excess or extra yarn through. Once the yarn is in a diagonal, take your loom comb and gently beat the yarn down towards the bottom of the loom.
As you secure the weft yarns with the loom comb, always be sure to check the edges. You don't want them to be drawn in and too tight. Every other row of weaving is a bit easier because you'll have the help of the shed stick. Again, be sure to catch the last warp yarn on the edge. Once the shed is open, you can insert your shuttle and pull the yarn through. While weaving, you'll have to change your weft yarns often, whether it's to add more yarn or to change the color of the yarn. When changing the yarn, it's good to have about an inch or two of yarn tail. From the edge, I'm going to continue the under over pattern. After a few yarns, I'm going to insert the old yarn behind the piece. Next, prepare a bobbin or a shuttle with a new yarn that you would like to add to your piece. Here I'm just using orange because it's the color I will continue with. To continue the under over pattern, I'm going to add the new yarn next to the old yarn. I inserted the new yarn's yarn tail behind the piece as well, and now I will continue the pattern. It's important to keep an inch to two inches of yarn tail in the back of the piece because you want to make sure that the yarn stays secured and in place while you're weaving. Once the new and old yarn tails are secured, take your loom comb and gently beat the yarns down towards the bottom of the loom. If you're curious about the yarn tails, they just stay in the back of your piece until you're done. Once you finish weaving, you can cut the yarns down and tidy them up. As you're weaving, you want to pay close attention to the density. Density is controlled by the thickness of your yarns, but also by how hard you're beating the yarns down. Here, for example, the lower weft yarns are beat down with more pressure than the ones above. The ones above are lightly pressed down and more of the warp yarns are exposed. By manipulating how much pressure you use on the project can affect and create beautiful designs. Those were my tips for prepping your loom for weaving and some basic weaving instructions. I hope that this video was helpful for anyone starting to weave. If you have any questions about weaving or looms, please leave me a comment below. You can also find more information about weaving on my site at www.fibersanddesign.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.